Good evening and welcome to this Tuesday, November 8, 2011 edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes sitting in for Alex. Frankly, he's worked himself into exhaustion, staying up all night for the past several nights to warn you that a police state's coming. So you better get up and do something about it because they have prepared this economic disaster and now they're squeezing the population for every last dollar while they round us up and use their policies to take away private property and more. We have a guest coming up later on that. He's a retired activist who's fighting the FEMA forced insurance in floodplains. Uh, that is Keith Haley. He's coming up later in the broadcast, but first the news. You heard Jesse Ventura earlier on Alex's show. He has been refused uh, in his lawsuit against the TSA. They've declared national security and used stalling tactics to keep him from being able to appeal or get a jury trial, and he's furious. But the only coverage in the media has been trying to brand him as unpatriotic, use things like his seeking uh, dual Mexican citizenship to imply he doesn't like the country. The country was never about the government. It was about the idea that governments are always corrupt and if we don't protect the rights enshrined in the Constitution, then we don't have a country. And that's what this is about. Let's play some of those Ventura clips right now. Uh, Governor, chin up. We appreciate you taking action. We appreciate you boycotting the airlines and taking a stand for everybody. But Rosa Parks was being made to sit at the back of the bus. Imagine if they were saying, well, we don't, we're going to grab your breasts and stick our hands down your pants and put you in a microwave oven. This is far more than that. This is a civil rights issue of our Fourth Amendment, of the Tenth Amendment, states' rights. I mean, you're a governor. I want you to speak to that. Governor, you've got the floor here. Tell us what's happening. Well, Alex, thank you. First of all, uh, it seems I'm running into a brick wall with the media. Uh, mainstream media won't discuss the case. They don't think it's relevant at all. In fact, I was due to do CNN yesterday, and I was bumped because, of course, the big trial verdict was coming down in the Michael Jackson case. You know, and so that has more importance. And I said to the person via second person at the CNN, I said, well, I completely understand. After all, mine's simply a constitutional issue. Why would that take pre 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 preference over, you know, Michael Jackson's verdict on uh, his drug overdose? You know, but that's, that's our pop culture media. Uh, locally, I did a radio show yesterday where the local guy Williams on WCCO TV or radio in Minnesota equated me to being Kim Kardashian, and that I was doing all this simply for publicity for my television show, this entire court case. Incredible. You know, I guess my children have never flown, and my wife hasn't flown in nine years uh, just because of the searching, not, not much less the groping now. I guess we never get to fly anywhere and visit places uh, because we want publicity as well. I don't know, you know, but that, that's what I'm going up in. Excuse my voice, Alex. I'm battling a bit of a sore throat. But uh, that's what I'm going up against in the media, and you're really my only outlet right now. I, you know, I laughingly kidded you about it last week, but it's, it's actually come true that uh, I think I'm going on. So there you have it. Ventura says he had a CNN interview canceled. The rest of the media won't address the important issues about his lawsuit over constitutional issues, over the fact that they don't have a right to search everyone in the airport because there could be a terrorist somewhere sometime. And you've heard him crying out about how the Viper checkpoints are coming to the highways. We're covering that more later in the broadcast. Kurt Nemo has an article but it's just ridiculous. And when they do cover Ventura, they're only going to focus on the fact that he's a strong personality. They said controversial things. You've heard him. He, they will not get into the meat and potatoes of this court case. They're basically blacking it out. They may cover Ventura himself if he makes it a big enough issue. So what is the media covering? We know it's all scripted. We know they hand down talking points. We know the news anchors are told what to say as they cover trivial issues. In this case, they bumped him over the Michael Jackson uh, manslaughter case. We have a clip now from Conan O'Brien that just illustrates how they cover the fluff, the bread and circuses, and how it's even that is all scripted. Can we go to that clip? News stations around the country have picked up on this story, and each one is putting its own unique spin on it. 
Talk show host Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be able to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on his late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope. That's enough, but you see they have dozens and dozens and dozens of examples of word for word scripted media, and we think we can trust this media. We've been trained to rely on them for news reporting. Obviously, they're only focused on trivial issues, entertainment, and the rest of it. Another example, Detroiters launch a petition against Nickelback halftime show during the precious Detroit Lions Thanksgiving game, saying they don't like the band, they want better entertainment. Where's the outrage about the NFL going along with government-mandated pat-downs, uh, basically being a quasi-government fascist organization? So we've got invasions in the public sector, and now more encroachments on our right in the private sector. Meanwhile, the media has totally trained us to just live within our comfort zone, uh, to just kind of be dull and quiet while they take over the whole country. And if you had any doubt about the way they continue to manipulate the news, you need to look no further than what really is the ongoing story of the Ron Paul blackout in the 2012 GOP primary season. There's yet another example in the New York Times, uh, their November 3rd article, Is Obama Toast? Handicapping the 2012 Election. And they've got an accompanying chart where they put Huntsman out front as the most likely to benefit from a slow economy in a race against Obama. Romney's up there, Kane, Perry. Bachman, no sign of Ron Paul. Any way you slice it, he's in the top tier of this election, at least the top four candidates. They have five here, and he's not mentioned in this lengthy article until page four when they come up with a manufactured extremism score, putting Ron Paul at 96% extreme, uh, profiling his supposed supporters and his their estimation at the New York Times of his ideological principles, really just promoting the center, left of center, and slightly right of center candidates who all support the establishment. Continued blackout of Ron Paul. It's no surprise, but we've covered it extensively, and you need to look into it and wake up to the fact that we don't have elections, we don't have media, and we're really in a lot of trouble. Furthermore, We Are Changed Chicago spoke with former press secretary Robert Gibbs, uh, really one of the classic mouthpieces for government tyranny, real weaselly guy, always covering. You saw him back in 2008 when Obama was caught attending the Bilderberg Conference and the uh, reporters were upset because they were trapped on the plane. He played it off. Well, now uh, We Are Changed just talked to Robert Gibbs, asked him about the Federal Reserve, and he says, we have a policy going back decades never to talk about the Federal Reserve at the White House. Doesn't matter how it affects you or your economy. Don't talk about it. Let's play that clip. I always have a role in the White House and uh, 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 Clarence uh, probably got out of this for decades. Don't comment on the Federal Reserve. Okay, that is uh, not really the best audio, but it's important that people are continuing to confront these officials across the country. And what he said there, if you didn't hear it, was that they have a policy that goes back decades not to talk about the Federal Reserve. Doesn't matter that it's the most important thing to our economy, that they're completely behind this controlled economic collapse. And really, if you haven't caught on, they've really set the net. They're coming after people. They've started rounding up Occupy protesters, kind of an easy pretext. But they've really prepared to manage the population for some time. They've seen the likelihood of economic riots of one kind or another coming, and they're prepared to control uh, this population. But you can't talk about the Federal Reserve, certainly not about people like Ron Paul who want to rein it in or even end it. Uh, and other news that isn't covered in the mainstream, uh, we're not perfect here either, but we try to cover as much as we can. Uh, Mercola.com is covering how don't buy meat and potatoes or herbs with this label. That is the irradiated food label. You can see it there, the little pink uh, dotted circle around, I guess, what's like an organic plant of some kind. And it goes on to say how the level of gamma radiation used starts at one kilo gray. That's in your food, including meat, potatoes, herbs, and a whole lot more, equivalent to 16 million some odd chest, chest x-rays, goes all the way up to 30 kilo gray, uh, which is 500,000 chest x-rays, or 10,000 times a human lethal dose. And through pasteurization and other processes, they really dull our food down, take out the nutritional content, and we wonder why cancer pops up. Yet we can't rein in the FDA. We can't talk about how they just really give a green light fast track for all the GMO foods. They ignore some of the most dangerous additives in the food and, and food containers. 
And uh, what are we going to do in this country, really? It's, that's another important area that we don't cover enough. Uh, now, the Iranian war also continues to heat up. In the same week that you've seen Israel essentially ready to go on a uh, unilateral strike against Iran uh, with expected U.S. backing, you see the manufactured IAEA uh, atomic agency report about to come out. It's already been leaked to the press, uh, really hyping fears about Iran's nuclear weapons capabilities, uh, which any way you look at it is just dredged up nonsense. You saw all the lies and extreme propaganda, including from top cabinet officials during the Iraq war, uh, the lies about yellow cake and mobile weapons labs, and the WMDs themselves. Now the IAE for Iran is concluding that Iran has upgraded the level of enrichment from 3.5% to below 20%. And they go on to explain how it could be only a matter of days, I believe 60 some odd, till it's a nuclear power. How many other countries have hundreds, thousands of nukes? Russia has definitely thousands. Israel has hundreds. Uh, Western Europe has hundreds per country. And yet we now have to supposedly go to war and be totally afraid of Iran because they're on the globalist hit list, and the Obama regime is part of the same program the Bush regime was part of. Uh, we have a clip now from Patrick Henningsen giving his breakdown of this breakthrough on this manufactured report. To Patrick Henningsen, he's editor of the Infowars.com website. Patrick, very good evening to you. Thanks for being on the program. Okay, down to basics. What are the implications of these claims? If they come out, what are they going to be? Well, the, the report that's due to come out ne next week by the International Atomic Energy Agency is basically saying that Iran has reached a stage in its research where it, this is the precursor to an A-bomb, to an atomic bomb. And what they've done is they've done research into deuteride um, nuclear physics and also neutron physics, okay? And this is meant to be some sort of implicating crime that is going to allow the West to place sanctions on Iran or to have weapons inspectors go in, etc. But this is research that's being done all over the world in a lot of different countries, universities. So if, if Iran is guilty of doing this level of research, then they'll have to put sanctions on about 100 countries. Is now a real possibility? Well, I think this week we've seen uh, the UK come out openly in public to say that uh, there are plans for an attack on Iran. Israel has done missile tests as well on an uh, interballistic missile that has nuclear warhead capabilities. And the US uh, is policy is well known. Uh, the Hawks in Washington, led by Hillary Clinton and the State Department and the neoconservatives, have wanted to have a preemptive strike on Iran for as way back as early as 2004. So this is not new news. Interesting line as well. Only today, in fact, senior U.S. military official uh, saying that the U.S. is worried that Israel might go it alone indeed and attack Iran without warning. I mean, it begs the question, has Tel Aviv really become such a proverbial loose cannon? Well, the, the leak that came out of, allegedly came out of either Shin Bet or Mossad, that there were already operational plans to have a preemptive strike against Iran v from Israel, that was leaked out. Benjamin Netanyahu uh, went, was absolutely flabbergasted, and the hard line, the Luke Kid hard line, were, were really upset about this leak. But thank God, and I tip my hat to these people in Israel who did leak this information, because it's absolute madness. If you look at the geopolitical situation right now in the region, an attack on Iran is going to basically put gasoline on a fire that has already reached incredible temperatures. So it's, it's not something we can afford. Patrick. And so that's just part of the report for Russia Today that Patrick Henningsen, one of our Infowars.com writers, uh, gave. But any way you slice it, uh, the globalists know that people who research foreign policy and pay attention, they know this is a manufactured thing just to provocate war with Iran. This is, again, meant for the general public who swallowed lies about Gaddafi, who swallowed lies about Saddam Hussein, bin Laden, and all the rest of it to just cheerlead once again for a war that will absolutely destroy what's left of our republic. Now, coming up, we have the guest on the forced mandate for FEMA flood insurance. That is Keith Haley. You thought it was just stuff like health insurance. No, it's going to be all across the board in your life and a whole lot more police state news, how they're using these protests now increasingly as an excuse to clamp down and uh, use rubber bullets and the rest of it. Now, PrisonPlanet.tv, you've seen how much we've done with the InfoWars nightly news. You've seen the free money bomb broadcast that we put out only a few days ago. You've seen the special reports and the other stuff. Now you have a chance to try it, a 15-day free trial, 15-day free 
trial until the end of November. So check it out for yourself, what PrisonPlanet.tv has to offer. It's already a low cost and a really powerful tool in fighting this info war. So we hope you check that out. We'll be back in just a moment with more news. Stay tuned. I'm Aaron Dykes. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. And we are back from break on this InfoWars nightly news broadcast transmission. Again, I'm Aaron Dykes. Now, in case you haven't noticed, all the things that have been happening in this country have been sort of scripted. One response leads to the other. The whole war on terrorism was meant to invoke this vague, shadowy, paranoid threat that the uh, hidden terrorists could look like anyone, could be anywhere inside the country, just in time for this total economic implosion and the clampdown response. Now, as a continuation of that, you don't see uh, the fact that bin Laden's been captured or high-level targets like Al Laki have been reportedly killed. No, you see more clampdown, more paranoid secret police behavior. And now Paul Watson continues to report on the DHS use of new smart streetlights. DHS official, you would never know if new streetlights were spying on you. And it quotes Fox Charlotte, Fox News in Charlotte, uh, speaking with the Deputy Homeland Security Director there in Charlotte, who says, with these new smart street lamps, you'd never know if the streetlights were spying on you. And as Paul Paul points out in the article, it is just like the book 1984, where they have hidden microphones, hidden cameras. You never know who in society might be the secret police waiting to bust you on a thought crime, on some idea, without even the evidence of there being a crime, the idea that you could be involved in a crime. They're going to watch out for that. At the same time, uh, Fox Charlotte was told that these street lamps could also be used to pick up movement at certain hours of the day, as in to enforce a curfew. Curfew for what? For the threat of uh, riots over economic conditions, over a possible terrorist. Let's look at what's really happening in this country. And uh, this, just this disgusting quote here, if the city installed streetlights with surveillance abilities, uh, which are in these new program cameras that also put out government alerts and warnings, you would never know Charlotte's Homeland Security Chief was quoted as saying, just a further disgusting development in the total takeover of our country. Meanwhile, just what Ventura warned about, just what Alex has been warning about really for well over a decade, that there's gonna be highway check checkpoints, and a whole lot more. More states accept TSA Viper teams at transportation hubs. And you saw last, uh, a couple weeks ago, where Tennessee was supposedly the first state uh, to use these Viper teams for their random inspections. We know it was already brought out in Florida at the bus and train stations. And they say it could be randomly anywhere in the country. The new Viper team budget for 2012 was given at $109 million, and up to 37 Viper teams could be deployed anywhere in the country randomly to find uh, behavior detection for inspection, for security screening, and for random law enforcement checks, unpredictable deployments throughout the transportation sector. You've seen it already justified in the 100-mile border zones for drug and immigration interdiction in total violation of the Fourth Amendment. Now they're going to do it randomly on highways uh, because of the various threats they say could be coming. So that's another important thing to look out for. And why aren't they talking about that issue? And why, when the people say no to body scanners and the invasive activity at airports, does it have to expand to Viper Team? It's a Homeland Security program. You better believe, just like FDR said all those years ago, that if it happens in government, it was planned that way. And there's a plan for this TSA police state rollout. And we better say no as loud as we can before it's totally too late. Meanwhile, uh, the protests going on around the world are continuing to escalate with police getting ready for a violent response. They've now announced their, quote, right in London to fire rubber bullets on protesters, uh, you know, under the pretext of protecting police should their lives be endangered. 
something that, uh, well, I'm not indicting the London police or the UK police here, but in general, there's been an overreaction about the safety of these officers and a clampdown on what is typically uh, very peaceful protesting. The quote here, by contrast, more than 4,000 police will oversee tomorrow's march expected to attract crowds of 10,000. 4,000 police for a crowd of 10,000. Uh, that's because they supposedly believe it's going to get violent. Uh, meanwhile, you've seen in places like Oakland, the Occupy Oakland protests has already gotten violent with police. They've already uh, fired rubber bullets at former Marines, at uh, journalists, other regular people who haven't done anything wrong. And uh, they've also identified provocateurs, police provocateurs in the crowds there. Uh, so we know that's going on. You've seen Alex's films, Police State 2, The Takeover, and the rest of it, where they put government paid provocateurs in at these protests to give them all a bad name and specifically to justify this overreacted uh, police response. Now in Oakland, the police have lacerated Army Ranger's spleen, causing internal bleeding, and they denied him medical treatment for 18 hours. And uh, they beat him with nightsticks on his back, ribs, and shoulders and lacerated his spleen. Uh, that's a veteran known as uh, Kayvan Samgehi. And uh, they say he was the second former American serviceman and only in the past two weeks to be badly hurt in Oakland at the protest. And uh, they claim he was resisting arrest and remaining present at the site of a riot, uh, whatever exactly that means. Now, things have gotten crazy there. They claim that some protesters have set fire uh, to a hastily assembled barrier. Uh, but we know there's a lot of provocateur going on, and we just need to continue to speak out against this and look out at what's happening. Meanwhile, in Fresno, also in California, Occupy protesters were told by police that the local penal code not to occupy the park outstrips the U.S. constitutional right to free speech, to the freedom of assembly, the right to address your grievances and otherwise gather together peacefully in public. They've arrested some 20 protesters and ordered the rest of them out of the park there in Fresno and they specifically asked the police what they were enforcing saying it was the penal code and specifically saying it overrides the First Amendment and the Constitution and they also specifically asked these police officers if they were going to obey the oath to the Constitution they took you know kind of the oath keepers pledge that people good patriots have spread the message about all across the country and they said no we're going to just enforce this penal code and damn the Constitution. What's it worth anyway, right? Uh, amazing, right? Isn't that amazing? He said, no Constitution in America, no protection for your First Amendment constitutional right to peaceably assemble. We're radicals because we stand here defending our constitutional right to peaceably assemble. That, of course, was Hunter, one of the protesters. Just more evidence of how they're using the evacuation of these Occupy protests and kind of the unwelcome continuation uh, as a pretext to get kind of forceful and clamp down on free speech in this country. And why not? That's just the way things are going to go. We'll keep an eye on that general situation as it unfortunately continues to develop. Meanwhile, we have a guest coming up, Keith Haley. He's going to talk about the force mandates for flood insurance, specifically in his area in Michigan. But I know this is going on all across the country. Meanwhile, yesterday, Alex reported on the Missouri residents who are upset by the order to move lake homes. And this is from the Federal Energy Regulation Commission, who have cited various designations for a hydroelectric dam, and they themselves have kind of uh, mapped out a zone where they plan to evacuate residents uh, because of the interest of this dam, even though many of the people have been there uh, 80 years or more. And uh, they say basically any improvement since a certain time is grounds to destroy that property and seize it uh, for this private interest in this kind of quasi public private partnership that is part of the larger takeover of our public waterways. And you've heard about the rural councils. There's a dozen or more, probably a couple dozen federal agencies, including the Department of Defense, including Homeland Security, including FEMA. And they plan to exert jurisdiction where it doesn't exist over rural areas all across the country. And that most certainly includes waterways. Uh, you probably remember a couple years ago when they declared that due to the threat of terrorism, the feds could have jurisdiction over all federal waterways, including puddles. Uh, here you have President Obama's executive order 13575 creating the rural councils. Uh, there was an amazing clip on that that we played previously in past InfoWars broadcasts. 
So for more on the federal government's takeover of private property through various excuses and, and justifications, we go now to Keith Haley. He's an activist in the Michigan area, and he has a long background with weather forecasting. He was part of various uh, computer forecasting programs. He was also a severe weather observer for the National Weather Service, among other uh, parts of his background. So we are joined by him now to talk about how FEMA is forcing people to buy insurance. Are you exactly. there, sir? Hey, good afternoon. Um, my name is Keith Haley. I've been living here in my home for 48 years since 1963, uh, December of. So it's going to be 48 years this coming December. Uh, it started out last oh, December or so. I received a letter from Wells Fargo Mortgage Company stating that I have to have mortgage insurance. I said, oh, this must be some mistake. Because when we bought our mortgage, I actually signed up for it in 2003, everything was fine and dandy. I mean, they said, Mr. Haley, you don't have to worry about anything. You're not in a flood zone whatsoever. And come to behold, I wind up getting a notification and I ask, is this some mistake? They said, well, FEMA told them that to tell us, the mortgagees, that we have to have flood insurance. I says, this is ridiculous. I've been living here in my home at that time 47 years, haven't had any floods whatsoever. I've been living here since the age of eight years old. And since I'm a severe weather spotter, I also tell national weather if we have any what we call flooding. Well, all the years I've been living here, we haven't ever had the river even come close to my front doorstep. I'm better than 100 feet away from the river. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and then here it is, I was told that I had to have 45 days notice to get it done or that the mortgage company would find um, flood insurance for me at, at an even higher rate. So I went up going on YouTube and I says, what's, what's going on? And there was this one couple out, I believe in Colorado, didn't jump to the tune of the uh, mortgage company and they had to quote, get flood insurance. And this was a little tiny stream wasn't even you know, worth to say anything um, of any water to come out of, of the ground. So they, even though they had maybe you know, 15 or 20 feet worth of a uh, of small brook or a little stream, they had to have what we call flood insurance. And then because of that, they don't know what they're going to do, how to pay for their mortgage, because of the simple fact is, is that FEMA told them through the mortgage company, they have to have flood insurance. Exactly. So we were talking about redrawing the maps, expanding the flood zones, and then forcing people to buy really expensive, and, and as you point out in the documents you sent us, really pretty useless insurance. Uh, tell them how much it cost. Okay. For, for me, uh, $800 with a $5,000 deductible, and that's not even including anything for your contents of your home. They said that you have to have that amount of insurance to cover for the full value of your home. Well, Michigan took a, a you know has taken you know quite a few hits, and they say say kind of make a pun out of it. Our mortgage is underwater, ha ha. Mm -hmm. Well, because it's you know at that time when we took the mortgage out, it was worth say a hundred thousand dollars. We'd be lucky if we get forty out of it, but yet it has to be for the full replacement value. And that gets to be adding up to a few thousands of dollars. Well, as it stands right now, I am on Social Security. My wife is too. And I get a small state pension. And now with this $800, there's no guarantee it's going to stop at 800 Next year it could be 1000 It could be 1200 the following year. Especially with all the disasters that has taken place here in the United States and FEMA being broke, how much more will it go up? We are already paying taxes, and FEMA is part of Homeland Security. We're always paying a, a big chunk for this or a big chunk of that. I have to live within my budget. Why can't the government live within theirs? And I just see it as a big power grab and also more of a confiscation of what we call our monies that we do have, what we're getting. And since I just recently got a 3.6 increase, oh yes, I'm living under 
big money. It amounts to is maybe thirty or thirty five dollars. Mm-hmm. And what can you buy, especially with what's going on in the stores and especially at the gas pumps? And I just find it ridiculous. Now add insult to injury, they told me I had to have everything done in forty five days. I just recently received the policy in July saying that it will start maybe June 31st until July 1st of 2012. Well, you know, if they were in such a big hurry in 45 days, why did it take them almost six months to issue out a policy? And another thing, I received a little type book that's stating how to process a claim. Later, the letter was stated August 30th. I didn't receive until maybe two or three weeks or so ago. And also had a history of uh, any claims that had been uh, filed on this property for flood insurance. Right. And this was, and so, so there's been, they say, no claims on this record, and it goes back all the way to 1978. Now, with the flood insurance from FEMA, they say, uh, I've seen it on TV, I've seen it on other places on the news. They say you may have a 25 or 30 chance, or say one in four chances of having that flood during a 30 year period. Yeah. Well, this is 1978, it's better than 30 years. And by that time, the way they figure, I would have had my home wake call flooded out four times. And then. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just totally disagree with it. Their maps are totally inaccurate. And I'm not going to go down without a fight. And I'm just trying to be like the 21st century Paul Revere telling everybody, Warning people, yeah. write, your, write your congressman and, and do something. But we know on the bigger picture, it's a power grab all across the country. They're forcing people on any kind of waterway, any coastway to buy flood insurance. And uh, it, we've already talked about how much it costs. But let's talk about the takeover where the government can't, won't help you like in Katrina but they're gonna take over all these waterways. We covered just yesterday, um, Missouri, they're ordering people to move from lake homes or go along with all these crazy regulations because a hydroelectric dam has uh, some kind of claim over the area. And you've also seen how two thirds of the population lives in the so-called constitution-free border zone. That's all along all the coastways, that's where almost everyone lives. Uh, Mr. Haley, your comments. Well, I think it's, it's more like we are being surrounded. The takeover is being in, in process. And what they're trying to do is probably want to round us up and put us in camps. And I, people have to say enough's enough. We're not taking it. We've got to stand up for our rights and tell our senators, I don't care what it takes to get the message across. I've been trying to get a hold of my uh, senator, Debbie Stabenow, and I have received absolutely nothing in return from her. I want. I even wanted to try to even have a personal meeting, one on one, or a group of us, stating, "Say, here's what's going on." I testified in front of an insurance committee for the state of Michigan. They passed a resolution called HR 62 to help Congress get off their duff and actually do something to help out Michigan and help this region or across the country yeah. to get something going and stop FEMA once and for all. FEMA originally was scheduled to, quote, help all people for disasters and also help all, say, for nuclear wars. But this has gone way past their uh, main objective. Well, it's definitely time to say no. We've seen really an inability from the states to seemingly to say no to FEMA or any other federal agency. They just grab whatever they want. Uh, now, you have also been taking action not only through Congress, but with your neighbors and things. You've got a document here, FEMA coming at your door and flood insurance, trying to educate people about all kinds of points going on here. And I mean, among other things, it drives down the home value. You talked about how people on fixed incomes won't even be able to afford their own homes. Uh, tell us about your website and what people could do to fight back wherever they might be. Okay, my website, I did this everything on a very minimal amount of money. The website uh, is what called a freebie. I learned this from Kim Commando, where to go on the internet that you can design your own website. So I wound up getting the information, put it involved, and I develop a website. I'll give you uh, the website address, www.wix.com 
forward slash Keith, K-E-I-T-H, R-O-Y, underscore, H-A-L-E-Y, J-R, forward slash, FEMA, F-E-M-A, dash, A-N-D, dash, plot, F-L-O-O-D, dash, insurance. Yes, sir. And, it, and I know it's a long one, but bookmark it so you have to type it all the time. And, but, yeah, and, uh, we, and we do have that on screen, sir. Okay. And that way that you can research what's going on. You can take a look at my interviews from the TV stations. I've been on three different TV stations to cover a large majority of Michigan, what everybody's facing here, and especially the southern part of Michigan, and also the things what I have faced for frustrations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said I could uh, appeal it, but I have to come up with between three to five hundred dollars for having a professional um, survey done, you know, with heights and levels and things of that nature, and still no guarantee whether or not the FEMA will accept it. Well, Keith Haley, we know it's a complex issue, but it is the time to fight back and say no, uh, not only there in Michigan, but all across the country. The federal exactly. takeover is happening. We thank you for joining us, and we hope people will look more into the FEMA flood plain insurance issue, the takeover of waterways everywhere, really. They've even said they, could, they have jurisdiction over all federal waterways because of terrorism. I mean, what does that mean? Anyway, Alex will be back tomorrow in the InfoWars Nightly News. As you know, he's been working overtime, not even really sleeping uh, since the money bomb, and he'll be back in full force tomorrow. He was on an all-night interview last night. That's why I'm sitting in. But we will bring you even more with the InfoWars Nightly News, and thanks to your support, we'll be able to reach even more people now. Help us with our mission. Now is the time. Ladies and gentlemen, good night.